security challenges, in our opinion, seem to have overwhelmed our security institutions. The governors are supposed to be the state security officers of their state. There is need for us to at least engage the traditional rulers. We need to do something about our porous borders. We have to own it from the unit level to the world level to the local government to state. Mr. President, the importance of today for us is for us to take action. Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have been. Hello and welcome to Inside the Senate. I am Husaina Amina Aboki, your anchor. As promised, the Senate resumed plenary on Tuesday the 18th of January 2022, sufficiently prepared to confront the challenges facing the nation in the months ahead. We will bring you details of the resumption in our next edition of the program. In this week's episode, we have a review of the finance bill, interviews with senators as well as a report on a public hearing organized by the Committee on ICT which held shortly before the recess. Stay tuned for the details after this short break. The Senate will send a message to the President to leave opportunities from that Today is a matter of urgent public importance and we are aware that when this particular motion for a longer term development, arise to scan the motion. Those in favor of this prayer say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Thanks for being with us. The finance bill plays a prominent role in the budget as it relates to its funding as well as its execution. The pioneer version of the bill, which was passed in 2020, did not provide for new taxes and incentives as a result of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, amongst other things. As a result, a 2021 version of the bill was recommitted to the Senate by President Buhari on Tuesday, the 7th of December, 2021. Read first and second time on Wednesday, the 8th of December and referred to the Committee on Finance for more legislative action. One of these was a public hearing held on Tuesday the 14th of December 2021 where stakeholders gave a variety of opinions particularly as they affect taxation, tax exemptions and incentives. During the public hearing, the Nigerian Labour Congress NLC as well as the Trade Unions Congress TUC were unanimous in requesting tax incentives and exemptions for some categories of workers amongst other things. We demand that workers whose income are below or equal to the national minimum wage should be exempted from paying the payee. Another aspect that bothers us is taxation on the income of trade unions. First, how does the income of trade unions come? From workers who have already paid tax. Let's go to stamp duty. From the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria, we are proposing that the electronic money transfer levy of 50 naira to 10 naira because of multiple taxation, the levy should only affect from 50,000 naira upward. The representative of the Nigerian Insurance Association advocated incentives to the sector. Personal income tax, section 33, subsection 3, where um, what policyholders pay in, uh, in terms of annuity is now not tax exempt. We want to plead contribution to, of insurance to GDP is still low. In order to create awareness, this incentive should be allowed to stay for now. Chairman of the Nigerian Automotive Manufacturers Association called for stable industrial policy to stop manufacturers relocating to other climes, manufacture and return the finished products into the Nigerian market. No one would invest his money in an economy where the policies change year on year. And we tried to pass the auto policy bill through the National Assembly. Um, it passed through, but the president has withheld his accent to the bill. The, res the result is that investors do not want to come here because they believe that the, the policy will change year on year. Now people are going to invest in Ghana where there's no market. The, all the investors are going to Ghana, the vehicles are coming to Nigeria because there's no market to buy those vehicles there. 80% of all the investors are shut down now. Go to Peugeot, go to Toyota, all of them are shut down. 
because they would rather import used, used vehicles than assemble. The Minister of Finance responded to the submission. Our tariff regime, as far as vehicle is concerned, is very high compared to our neighboring countries. And that was one thing that we sought to. And with the AFCFTA, we have to be competitive. Otherwise, we will still, one way or the other, be the dumping ground. The committee chairman closed the hearing with this remark. It's going to be all rounder by the, at the end of the day when this bill will be finally passed. The hearing ended with a resolution to study and collate all submissions and arrive at a conclusion to be submitted to the Senate for more legislative action. The report was subsequently compiled and presented to Senate Plenary of Tuesday the 21st of December 2021 by the Chairman Senator Solomon Olamile Khan as a prelude to the passage of the 2022 Appropriation Act. He then gave the committee's recommendations. The committee recommends that the oil and gas company should be taxable while the midstream and downstream oil and gas companies are liable to corporate tax without the benefit of tax exemption for firm exporting goods to earn foreign exchange in order to prevent double, double dipping by the gas utilization as well as two petroleum profit tax incentive or the pioneer tax holiday under ITRA. There was no debate on the presentation. As a result, the recommendations were considered in the Committee of the Whole and the Finance Bill 2021 read the third time and passed. The Finance Bill is amongst several that were passed by the Senate before it recessed, ending 2021 on a positive note for the Senate. But how did the Senate fare in general for the entire year? Inside the Senate spoke with some senators across party lines. We've tried as much as we can to bring unity among you know, the senators, the 109 senators, across bipartisan line. Uh, Nigerians may remember we have three parties. The APC is the majority, followed by PDP. And of course, we have one YPP senator from Anambra State. And uh, all we do is try to bring unity around every subject, have a meaningful conversation, and arrive at a decision in such a manner that even if majority have its way, definitely minority will have had the say in a way that is satisfactory and to you know everybody's mutual consent. As National Assembly, we've tried to do our best to get the country going to provide good governance. As I, we, we are doing this not without challenges. Of course, uh, the country, just like many countries in the world, is facing security and economic challenges. The economy, I would say first, because of the pandemic, uh, the world economy uh, had, has been in crisis since 2020 because there were, there were lockdowns, so there, was no, there were no activities that would enable generation of resources, and particularly for Nigeria. And this has increased poverty, has increased uh, agitations and so on. In many countries in Africa, which came down to Nigeria, and I saw Nigeria is also sharing from that. But despite all this, I say we've done so far so good because uh, the necessary legislative intervention to get the economy to go in. I think the Ninth Assembly have done well, uh, given the bills uh, that we've passed, uh, given the issues that we've paid attention to um, as they came before us on a daily basis. Uh, most importantly, what we've done that is very important is to change the budget cycle, which was a major issue uh, in running the government of this country. Let me start with the PIA, the Petroleum Industry Act. Um, you know that for long, right from 1999, this bill has been there, defying all sorts of attempts by the previous assemblies. But to the glory of God, the Ninth Assembly successfully and triumphantly, uh, triumphantly passed that legislation. The Electoral Act has been another legislation that uh, one would say is uh, a plus to the Ninth Assembly. The Finance Bill, another critical legislation that is intended to show up the, the revenue base of the nation, uh, that is uh, to the uh, plus to the Ninth Assembly. We are very innovative and I believe we are simply the best. The 10th Senate 
I pray they, they should do better because when they do better, it shows that Nigeria is improving. We cannot be stagnant. So we should be developing and developing and turn Nigeria around. And the issue is this. Most of these bills we are sponsoring. It should send a signal to Nigeria that there's room for development. We will take a short break here for our notebook segment. Our topic this week is the legislative debate. What is it? Stay tuned for the answer. The legislative debate is a parliamentary procedure where parliamentarians deliberate on issues brought to the floor for legislative concurrence and approval. This issue may be motions, bills, or points of order, among other matters. After the sponsor of any of these matters has made his case, legislators are given the opportunity to deliberate in favor or against the issue brought up. After the debates, the presiding officer will seek the opinion of the entire parliament through a question, where those in favor will say yay, and those against will say nay. Whichever side gets the majority will have the day, and the matter will be approved. The only way out of the pandemic is for the population to observe the recommended measures advised by the NCDC, the Senate Committees on Health and Primary Health Care and Communicable Diseases will continue to engage with the Federal Ministry of Health and the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. Welcome back. Earlier on, we reviewed the finance bill and took the opinions of some senators on the performance of the Senate in 2021. We will now take a report from the committee rooms where the Committee on Information and Communications Technology, ICT, hosted stakeholders to a public hearing. In another committee room, the Committee on Water Resources met with the minister and one of the agencies under it. The report is presented from our studio. The public hearing, which took place shortly before the Christmas and New Year break on Thursday, the 16th of December 2021, was on a bill for an act to provide for the establishment of the Information and Communications Technology, Iwo, Oshun State, 2021. It was sponsored by Senator Adelere Oriolowo. All the distinguished guests. And Declaring the hearing open, Senate President Amar Lawal, who was represented by the Vice Chairman Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters, Senator Emmanuel Okejev, stated that pushing the frontiers of ICT to make it in tandem with modern day realities is one of the legislative agendas of the Ninth Assembly. Therefore, any effort along this line is always encouraged by the leadership of the Senate. It is in that light that the Senate President conveys his appreciation to our colleague, Senator Rio Lowo, for sponsoring this very important bill that helps in pushing the frontier of what we have set for ourselves as a legislative agenda. Other chiefs that are here and all other invited guests. In a welcome address, the committee chairman, Senator Yakubo Seni, lamented that one of the committee's findings have shown that Nigeria's digital technology know-how rating comes behind most countries of the world, even when it has become the driver of all human endeavors. Whether it is in the field of medicine or security and intelligence, whether education, whether it is banking, agriculture, health services, manufacturing, aviation, power generations, marine services, building technology, immigration services, etc. ICT become the key infrastructure. In his remark, the sponsor of the bill, Senator Adelele Oriolowo, disclosed that the need for the placement of a vigorous national communications thrust with a view to meeting the growing demand for technological transformation and innovation in the nation's democratic experience prompted him into sponsoring the bill. He gave the objective of the institute when established. The institute, when established, will carry out scientific and applied research 
in the area of modern information technology, application to optimize processes and decision support system. The retail marketing business model will also be part of the institute's academic curriculum, where processes for optim optimal job shop scheduling and e-transaction skills will be learned. Speaking through his permanent secretary, the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Dr. Ali Isa Pantami, observed that the nation's 98 public universities and over 120 public polytechnics are presently suffering from inadequate manpower as well as chronic underfunding. In view of the above mentioned, he said, the institute when established will not be insulated from the above mentioned challenges, while its functions will amount to a duplication of the mandates being implemented by existing tertiary institutions in the country. The establishment of this new institute as provided for in the bill under the Ministry of Education does not absolve it from facing the same issues and challenges that hamper the production of employable graduates in the emerging digital technologies work environment. The establishment of this new institute can lead to a replication of mandates of already existing institutions. Accordingly, the minister advised that the bill should be stepped down. A former commissioner in the National Heart Commission, Alhaji Laide Teller, responded to the submission of the ministry. The Ministry of uh, Communication and Digital Economy has uh, spoken, but perhaps if you not look at the aspect of journalism, media communication, and information management. If they do, they probably realize that this institute has been proposed to be a great compliment. And other stakeholders spoke in favor of the bill. Amongst them was the paramount ruler of the Iwo Kingdom, His Imperial Majesty Oba Abdul Rashid Adewale Akombi, as well as an honorable member of the Oshu State House of Assembly, Honorable Uzamot Aliyu. It will be a federal facility. And if this comes to Iwo, you know, uh, it's going to be something that uh, this is going to be a treasure for us. Actually, it's a treasure already, but we need the federal government to now come and save this place. We want everybody in Nigeria to come and enjoy it. And that's why we will want you to uh, help us to pass this bill. As an institute dedicated for information and communication technology, is we provide alternative to the university education and thereby increasing enrollment of our youth into a higher institution after secondary school education. And offering opportunity for self-employment for those who graduate from the institute since it will be offering a professional courses. After contributions from several other stakeholders, the committee chairman ended the hearing with a promise that they will compile a report of the submissions for presentation to Senate plenary for more legislative action. The society together. Very quickly because we have to utilize the money. For the Committee on Water Resources, the subject of their meeting with the Federal Ministry of Water Resources was on its mandate and how far it had gone in effort to deliver on it. The Ministry of Water Resources was led by its minister, Engineer Suleiman Husseini Adamu. In a presentation, he spoke on what they are going to focus on in the year 2022. We're fully guided by the strategic objectives of the National Development Plan 2021-2025 in preparing our proposals, as well as government policy, government's policy thrusts as articulated in the Nigeria Economic Sustainability Plan. I would like to reiterate the fact that the Ministry of Water Resources has been in the forefront of clamoring for the completion of all ongoing projects. A committee member asked questions on new projects, even when ongoing ones have not been completed. So many new projects, and you have already made it very clear that uh, the funds allocated to the Ministry are not enough. Then why are you embarking on new projects when uh, the presidential directive is that priority will be given to ongoing projects. Then uh, there is a uh, one billion naira allocated to Middle Niger irrigation scheme. Uh, yeah, uh, what is it going to? Be? What, is, what, what what is it about? Middle Rima 
irrigation project is Goroyu Irrigation Project. Yeah, that's right. Yes, so the one billion is allocated to complete, but it's not even enough. It's we're also enough. making, we're asking, we're made a uh, presentation to, to, to Mr. President yeah. to see if we can get additional funds for energy. You may be close to our 10 billion now to complete. Yes, we know. We just yes. did an RETC which was approved. The RETC approval was about 10 billion. Yeah. But if we can get money to finish, we can finish it at less than the 10 billion because yeah. a lot of the money is also provision for claims, for foreign exchange frustration, for, uh, for variation of prices and so on. At the end of the session, the chairman commended the federal government for what it has done for the nation's water sector. I can say arguably no government has done as much in the sector. Uh, this is worth commending and I believe we'll do more. Uh, I'm sure before the end of this trailer will be able to complete so many projects. Another institution under the supervision of the committee is the National Water Resources Institute, Kaduna. Given a historical background and the mandates of the institute, the Director General, Professor Emmanuel Adanu, disclosed that it was established in 1979, while the act establishing it was passed in 1985, with the mandate to carry out specific functions. The promotion of the, and development of training in water resources, capacity building were to advise ministers on priorities in water, perform applied research and functions in all aspects of water resources, perform such ancillary services on planning, water resources management and river basin development. Other mandates of the institute according to him are in the areas of flooding outlook, particularly in areas where its occurrence is least expected. Nigeria's hydrological system and agricultural research into the possibility of growing crops outside areas where they are known not to flourish. In ending the session, the committee chairman assured that they will peruse all submissions made and arrive at a report to be presented to the Senate for more legislative action. Those were reports from the committee rooms. To end the program, we will take our profile segment next. Don't go away. Senator Yakubu Oseni represents Kogi Central Senatorial District under APC. He attended Roman Catholic Missionaries RCM Primary School Okene in Kogi State from 1982 to 1987 for his first school living certificate. He also attended the local government secondary school, Upogoro, as well as the Abdulaziz Atta Memorial College of Kenefo for his West African School Certificate, WASC. For tertiary education, Senator Yakubu Oseni attended Ahmadu Benlo University, Zaria, for a Bachelor of Science degree in Economics in 2001 and University of Abuja for a Master's in Economy in 2013. During his quest for education, particularly at first degree level, Senator Yakubu Oseni worked at the Mararaba branch of the First Bank PLC in 2003, rising to the position of business manager before retiring in 2016. He was also chairman of the Kogi State Board of Internal Revenue from 2016 to 2018, before leaving to contest as senator in the 2019 general elections, which he won. In the Senate, he is the Chairman, Senate Committee on Information and Communications Technology, ICT and Cybercrime. His legislative interests include education, ICT and entrepreneurial development, amongst others. With this, we come to the end of this episode of Inside the Senate. Join us next week for another edition. Thanks for watching. Remember that COVID-19 is real. Follow the recommendations of the experts and stay safe. God bless Nigeria.